Hi, Jeff Wag here from Built to Go, a van life podcast and YouTube channel. The fine folks at Bodega mailed this to me and they just said, hey, would you review our fridge? They didn't charge me anything for it. I didn't pay for it. I didn't ask them to send it to me. And they sent it with no strings attached. There was no contract or anything. I can do whatever I want with this fridge. I can say whatever I want about it. And that's the point of this video. I'm going to give you the ups and downs, pros and cons of this fridge and what I think of it. I've used it now for a few weeks and I'll give you the bottom line up front. I'm pretty pleased with it. This fridge has more features at the best price possible than any other fridge I've seen and I've used quite a few. First, this is a dual zone fridge. It has a freezer compartment and a refrigerator compartment or two refrigerator compartments or a freezer compartment and a freezer compartment. You can do whatever you want. You can control both sides equally. Now, a lot of these 12 volt compressor fridges have two compartments, but there's only one control. And the idea is that you'll set it at a freezing temperature and that the smaller compartment will be a little bit warmer. So you can keep soda and lettuce in there without freezing it, but you can keep your other stuff frozen. I have a few of those. They don't work all that well. I mean, they work, they're fine, but this is so much better because it's so much more flexible. The ability to have one side set at zero degrees Fahrenheit and the other side set at 37 degrees Fahrenheit lets you store anything you want just like you were at home. And for those times when you're just having a picnic and you just need a lot of beer storage, you can set both sides at 37, fill it up, and you're ready to go. I really like that feature. On either side is a basket, and this is essential because as you can tell from the way this thing is designed, it can get very heavy. We're talking about 48 quarts of space here. That's a lot of beer. This thing's going to get super heavy, and the baskets let you move it into and out of a vehicle as well as just see what's in there. So the idea is, is you take the baskets out, move the fridge into or out of the vehicle, and then you put the baskets in. That means you don't have to break your back lifting 75 or 100 pounds. Also, the handle that extends very nicely makes it easy to roll this thing wherever you need to go. Now, when I first saw these wheels, I was concerned that they would be some kind of cheesy plastic that would be likely to break if you were in a situation where it was like cold or it was a very rough road. But in fact, they're made out of a pliable vinyl material, so they're actually very rugged. And I've already wheeled this thing all over parking lots and gravel roads, and there's been no problem whatsoever. The handle is very strong, but I recommend that you don't ever pick it up when the handle is extended. Make sure you close the handle and then pick it up, and that will give you the most life out of this cooler. On the other side is just a sturdy handle that you can do whatever you want with, and of course, a handy beer bottle opener, always important. But wait, there's more. Let's say you're having Corona or some other kind of beer that you would generally put a lime in. Well, no worries here. Bring your own limes and there is a cutting board built into this thing. You can just take the cutting board out, plop it on the top, stick your lime on there and cut away. Oh, but you say, where am I going to put my knife? Well, you could put the knife in the cooler. That's not that big of a deal, or you could keep it with your other stuff. But this fridge actually has a secret compartment. It's not really a secret compartment. It's for a battery. And you'll see next to it, there's a little port for solar. That's a solar charging port to charge the battery that they sold these with. You can probably still find these kits, but what I'm seeing most often is that the fridges don't come with the battery anymore because it's easier just to use whatever battery bank you already have. In this case, I'm powering this with an old, inexpensive Awantfi battery bank that I think is 42 amp hours. And it will last for several hours running off of this with no problem. Also on the inside, you'll see there is a light for both sides, which is very nice. And at the bottom of the largest side, there is a drain plug, which is great for when you have to clean these things. You'll notice that the lid is switchable. You can switch it to whatever side you need it to be. It takes two seconds. It's not hard at all. So let's talk about the compressor. This is a standard Chinese 12 volt compressor. No, it's not a Danforth compressor. If you want one of those, you're gonna spend twice as much money for your fridge. The truth is that the Chinese compressors these days 
are pretty good. I've owned four fridges with the same compressor this one has, and they've all worked fine. I've never had a problem with them breaking, and this is over many years of use, everywhere from Death Valley to the northern reaches of Maine and Canada. No problems whatsoever. Now this fridge is a little different in the way the compressor works. Because each side is controlled separately, and there's only one compressor, it has to move fluid from one side to the other to keep the sides different temperatures. And you can hear that. Now the fridge runs at about 45 to 55 decibels when it's running, so yeah, you can hear it. It's not loud by any means. But if you're in a van at night and it's super quiet, sure, you're gonna hear this running. But you're also going to hear this sound. That's the sound of the liquid moving from one side to the other, and you will even hear that when the unit's off sometimes. It's fine, it's normal, it's just something you're going to hear when you first get used to this thing. Now the controls are a little bit complicated, but not too bad. In fact, they're actually pretty sophisticated. The one really nice thing is this sticker. <laughs> it seems like a small thing, but a lot of fridges don't come with this and you kind of have to figure it out or look in the manual. But if you just leave the sticker on, it tells you everything you need to know. How to turn it on and off, how to change the temperature, how to switch from one temperature to the other, how to change from max to eco, and how to set your battery protection mode. As for Max and Eco, you can see here I have it set to Max. Max will give you better performance on the fridge, but it draws more power. You can see right now I'm drawing 3.8, 3.9 amps. If I change that to Eco, you can hear it actually slow down. It goes down to 2.4, 2.5 amps. So for weaker batteries, you might want to set it on Eco. But for most uses, if you can, set it on Max and you're especially want, going to want to do that if you're using the freezer a lot, like if you have the big compartment set as a freezer, or if you're using both sides as a freezer. The USB port, well, it's always helpful to have another USB port, but this is not a hugely high power one. You could charge your phone with it, but it would take a while. So, so the app is called QZ Smart, and you can download it from the App Store. It's a little hard to remember because it is not called Bodega, and Bodega is made by Alpacool, so this is actually the same app you would use for an Alpacool fridge, but I wish it was called that. Anyway, you start it up, and I've already connected it to the fridge, so you can see right here. Now the setup is a little bit weird. You can see there that there's my fridge. If you want to add another device or you haven't added any, you hit the plus here, add device, and then you can see that they have all kinds of different products here. Now the TWW is the type of fridge we have, so you would select that. And then it tells you what to do and you just kind of follow along. Now I had a lot of trouble setting up my fridge. It was not possible to do it just with Bluetooth. I had to hook it up to Wi-Fi. That was how I actually did it, but I'm not sure why you can't just hook it up to Bluetooth directly. So expect a little bit of trouble setting up the app, but once I got it set up, it works just fine. Bodega Car Fridge, TWW. And if you select that, there's your controls for the fridge. Now, you've got the temperature on the left and the temperature on the right. Those are the actual temperatures. You've got the battery protect mode, which I have set in low. You have mode max, which is good, and the voltage shows 13.3. I have it set at 14.2. So you can see there's just a sliding dial to change the temp to whatever you want. So I like to have the fridge set at 37. The left is the big side. Whenever you see left, you know it's the big side. And on the right, I have it set to negative four. That's actually a little cold. So I'll set that to zero. Highest you can go is 68, and the highest you can go is negative 4. So if you want a freezer on both sides, you set them both as negative 4. Now if you click on more features, you also have the temperature scale. You can change it from Fahrenheit to Celsius pretty easily. Max Eco is right there, and battery protect high, medium, or low. Remember, that's how much protection you get. And the left box switch, right box switch, actually let you turn one side off. So if you only have a few groceries, you can actually just put them all on one side. You'll notice that you have to leave one side on. It will not let you turn off both sides because you would use the power button for that. Now you can lock the screen from here. I wasn't able to do it on the display itself, but you can lock it from here. So now that it's locked, I 
can't do anything with it, which I think is actually very useful. The fridge I have in my van now, occasionally a blanket will fall on it or something and change the temperature or whatever, or even turn it off, and uh, that is not good. Now let's have a look at some of the strange things I've noticed about this fridge. So I heard this terrible rattling noise and I thought, uh-oh, this is no good, but I realized it's just the rack. <laughs> that's all. It's just the rack vibrating a bit. So if you have anything in here at all, that's not going to be a problem. Or you take the rack out. <laughs> so right now I'm powering this with a 12-volt power supply that lets me keep track of voltage, amperage, and then watts, which is just these two numbers multiplied. And you can see here I'm using the 12 volt adapter. It's just plugged in, goes through here. This is a fuse and then into here. Very, very simple. But if you look here, I've got it set at 13.64 volts, which is, you know, kind of a weird number. So let's turn that down to 12.7. Depending on the kind of batteries you have, you'll have more or less. But 12.7 is nominal voltage for a 12 volt. So we do that. It's drawing 2.4 amps. That's pretty good. That ends up being about 30 watts. That's fine. But notice this. The screen has a built-in voltmeter, and it's to tell you, you know, how healthy the battery is. That's good, and you can see there's a little battery indicator here. Now, in this case, the battery indicator shows that it's full, but it's only showing 11.9 volts. Now, I'm giving it 12.7, so why does it only show 11.9? I don't know what's going on there, but do know this, that this is the true voltage. I've tested this. This is the true voltage. So somehow through all these wires and through all the circuitry in here, the voltage is actually getting reported as 11.9. This only really matters when you're setting your low voltage cutoff. And I would recommend that you set it lower than you normally would because this isn't a true reading. The other thing you can't really trust is these temperatures. Now, these aren't the temperatures it's set at. These are the actual temperatures. So right now my freezer's at five and my fridge is at 40. But you can see here I have the set at 37. So why is it at 40? Well, I just turned it on. It's gonna take a while to go down. That's not the problem. The problem is that this will fluctuate over the course of a day. It's set at 37. You'll see this go down to 35 and as high as maybe 42 or 43. And that's just the nature of these fridges they don't hold their temperatures that well. And when you test the temperature inside, it's usually a little bit warmer than what these show because the temperature sensor is actually inside the wall of the refrigerator and not inside the refrigerator itself. So I mean, this thing will freeze ice cubes and it'll keep your food cold. And really, that's what you want a fridge for. One other thing that you probably have noticed already, it's dark blue. And well, that may not be great in the hot sun. So make sure you put this thing someplace nice and shady to keep it cool. So, do I recommend this fridge? Yeah, I do. It's a really good bang for the buck. And okay, it's got a few little quirky things, but at the end of the day, it keeps your food the temperature you want it to, and that's what a fridge is for. As you might expect, I have a code for you. That code is JeffWag, one word. And if you go to Bodega's website and buy anything you want, you can use that code for a discount. Woo! You can also go to Amazon and get the fridge there. And uh, I've been seeing very good prices there lately. So there's a link in the show notes to the best link I've found. Yes, it's an affiliate link. I will make a little bit of money if you click on that, but it won't cost you a dime and it helps me make more videos like this. So thank you for that. The Bodega TWW45, a great fridge for a great price. And uh, I'm looking forward to using this myself. I'm gonna find a way to put it in my van. It's a little bit big, but I like it that much. And my fridge and I will see you down the road.